Hi everybody, my name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. So on this channel we already talked about ACES and color management in general and how they work. And today we will look at how we should properly set up ACES if we work on a show for Netflix. Because there's a couple of things that you can and cannot do when you work for Netflix. So let's go through them. And just before we begin, this does not mean you have to work with ACES if you're delivering to Netflix but it is highly recommended. Netflix allows several methods for color management, but since ACES is a widely adapted industry standard, it's just beneficial to use this one for everything. Usually there are more people than just a colorist involved in such a show. There are also VFX vendors, title designers, technical departments that only do VFX polls, deliveries, conforming artists, etc. There are several softwares involved in the entire process, so making sure a system is supported and available to anyone in the pipeline is just a must in my opinion. You see how this topic might be a bit more complicated, so we will probably jump back and forth in this video, but all of this matters to fully understand the concept. And trust me, I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, we could talk about the details for hours. So let's move on. So why do we color manage for Netflix in the first place? For modern streaming services like Netflix, you have to understand that depending on which device you watch a show on, there is a different color grade. There's at least one version for SDR and one for HDR displays, considering the subscription model allows it. To be fair, the list of deliveries changes every once in a while, and you will go through this way ahead with the employees from Netflix in the post-production planning phase. But you get the idea, you have to deliver a lot of stuff, and some of the deliveries require specific color space conversions. And because of this, we as colorists need a system to get us there. So let's go ahead and look at how we would set this up. So the easiest way would be to just set our color management settings over here in the project settings to ACES. ACES CCT specifically, and I talked about the whys for that in my introduction video on ACES and in my video about transfer functions. Both are linked in the video description. And yes, we are using the project color management and not node-based color management, and I will go through a few reasons later in this video. So here we can choose a default IDT and an ODT. So in our example, we would start with Rec709 as our ODT. And I usually leave the IDT at no input transform and assign it on a clip level in the media pool or the color page. And if you want to know why I do it this way, I can make a full video about this in the future. And by the way, if the footage was shot in any raw format, Resolve actually does all of the input color space conversions automatically. For some codecs, it's also able to read it from the included metadata, but let's always assume that the software doesn't know and we should double check it anyway. So now that we assigned the IDTs and the ODT, we are basically good to go. All of the color grading happens in ACES CCT, which is AP1 with a semi logarithmic transfer function CCT. In the project settings we also saw this checkbox for color space aware grading tools and it doesn't matter to Netflix if you enable or disable this one. You can choose which one you prefer and if you want to find out more about this topic please watch the video linked above. And also the other options can basically be left as is. Should we enable gamut compression or not? It again depends on how you would like to work. I explain what gamut compression is in my video about out of gamut colors and also how I like to apply gamut compression in my grades. So this checkbox as well depends on your personal preference. Now let's say we ingest new footage into the project during the grading process. For example, a VFX vendor delivered new shots. We import those into the project and assign the correct IDT. Usually this would be either ACES 2065-1 or ACES CG, as we're assuming everyone works in the ACES pipeline. If it's AP0 linear, so ACES 2065-1, we actually don't have to do anything since the no input transform setting in the project settings is exactly that. Now let's talk about deliveries. We graded both versions SDR and HDR and now render the film. For this usually we want to render an image sequence. Why? Well that's just the most solid workflow possible. If there are rendering issues like artifacts, you can easily replace individual frames. If there are new QC fixes or VFX updates, you can easily replace individual shots. This image sequence is called our Video Display Master, or VDM for short. It is usually a DPX or TIFF sequence in the final resolution and in the output color space. Now, this VDM will then be used to create the IMF, the interoperable master format, which is the delivery file with the various audio channels and subtitles that you can turn on or off in all available languages. So this is what the viewer sees and can interact with, changing the audio language, choosing the subtitles, skipping the intro, etc. Netflix wants us to deliver this VDM for the archivals as well. Besides this, they also usually want the non-graded archival master, the NAM. 
And this is an EXR image sequence of the final edit, with all the final VFX and QC fixes, titles, etc. But without the color grading and in a scene referred color space. For ACES this would be ACES 2065-1, and that's why we need an EXR image sequence, as EXR is the only file format that can store the linear data of the ACES color space. Why do they want that? The idea is that maybe if in the future there are new advanced display technologies, they can then use the sequence and recolor grade the film based on the new standards. So how do we get there? It's actually fairly simple. In the project settings we select no output transform as the ODT, so now it's an AP0 linear. And in the deliver page we enable flat pass. This is simply another way of saying render everything without the color grading. And if you thought of using a node-based color management instead, this is where it would become incredibly complicated to do so, as the node-based color management would be completely bypassed by the flat pass option. You would need to delete the entire color grade except for the ACES transforms. You would do all of that in a second timeline or project of course, but from experience I can tell you, you don't want to do that. There's always some unnecessary thing happening way too late, where there is maybe a new VFX that you have to reconform and then render again, but now in two timelines. There is a new title sequence, because there's always a new title sequence for reasons. Trust me on this one, you don't want to make the project handling too complicated and split things into multiple timelines or whatnot. Keep it as simple as possible, use a project-wide color management and you save yourself a lot of trouble. It's complicated enough managing the color grade for HDR and SDR, creating all the deliveries and keeping track of all the VFX versions that were used in the project. Oh and let's not forget delivering the film in multiple languages. And the reason some people prefer grading in a node-based environment is that they can apply operations before the IDT or after the ODT, which totally negates the idea of working color managed for the sake of delivering to multiple displays. The concept of ACES, or color management in general, is that everything happens inside one predefined color space and underneath the final ODT. Only this way you can swap this ODT and use a different one. Delivering a scene-referred sequence like the NAM for Netflix, for example, would be totally useless if you originally did something after the ODT. So, thank you for watching. As I said in the beginning, the overall setup is actually fairly simple. But for streaming services like Disney and Netflix, there are a couple of things like the archival that usually just no one talks about. So I hope this insight helped you understand why we work this way. And if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing to not miss out on upcoming episodes. And until then, I will see you in the next video.